remember about a year ago when Synology announced that they would no longer be supporting third-party drives in any of their Synology NASes moving forward? Well, if that was something you had bet money on, you would have lost. Synology has just announced they are rolling back that in DSM 7.3. This is big news. Let's talk about it. Hey there, home labbers, cell posters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here in what can only be described as a complete about face, Synology has officially changed their mind on the locking out of third-party drives from their NASes. In the release announcement for the upcoming Disk Station Manager 7.3, Synology wrote this. As a part of its mission statement, Synology is committed to delivering reliable, high-performance storage systems. This commitment has led to a standardized process of rigorous testing and validation for both hardware and software components, and has been an integral part of Synology's development approach for many years. Both Synology storage drives and components validated through the third-party program undergo uniform testing processes to ensure that they are able to provide the highest level of reliability with DSM. Synology is currently collaborating closely with third-party drive manufacturers to accelerate the testing and verification of additional storage drives, and will announce more updates as soon as possible. In the meantime, 25 model year Disk Station Plus, Value, and J-Series running DSM 7.3 will support the installation and storage pool creation of non-validated third-party drives. This provides users greater flexibility, while Synology continues to expand the lineup of officially verified drives that meet long-term reliability standards. Put simply, Synology has removed all drive restrictions on the 25 model year Synology Disk Station Plus, Value, and J-Series NAS hardware provided you're running version 7.3 of DSM. While we don't officially know why Synology decided to roll back its previous decision on requiring Synology branded drives only in its hardware, it's probably safe to say that the collective response from everyone who felt like this was a shameless money grab had something to do with it. Power to the people. Anyway, I'm not here to throw shade at Synology, but I will say that their previous decision must have had a significant impact on their consumer sales of NAS hardware. Considering the market saturation from companies like Ugreen, Terramaster, and countless others, it was baffling why they made the choice in the first place. If you remember, they officially stated the reason for locking down the hardware was due to the excessive customer support issues that were costing the company money. DSM 7.3 is officially available right now, so go grab a copy if you're looking to get access to your pile of non-Synology drives. I will say that the wording in their announcement did feel like that they were kind of implying that in the future there might be restrictions again, but at least not right now for year 25. I am personally relieved that they've come to their senses here. I know I for one stopped recommending Synology NASes to anyone who was looking for a home or Soho NAS because of the outrageous cost of the larger capacity Synology discs. The TCO on a small 5 base Synology NAS versus a Ugreen just didn't make any sense. In my opinion, DSM is one of the best user interfaces and experiences you can get for a NAS, and once again, I feel comfortable recommending their hardware. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Did you move on? Are you willing to give them a second chance, or have you sworn off Synology for good? Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.